Barry's Italian colony and the granite industry were thriving by 1900. The city had built a magnificent city hall and opera house complex, and Vermont granite monuments graced cities all across America. But a scourge, silicosis, devastated the community and threatened to shut down the stoneworking industry. In Italy, the uh, stone sheds were open structures, no walls. So you were out in the air and the dust wasn't concentrated inside of a building. When the workers came here, they were working inside much of the time. Pneumatic tools generated so much dust that workers sometimes couldn't even see across the carving shed. And they were dying before their 50th birthday. I always had trouble talking about my dad because <laughs> he died before I was seven. I was still six years old. He died because of the silicosis he contracted from the dust in the industry. He was in the, uh, what they call the sanatorium in, in Barry. I know I wasn't allowed to, to go near him. Silicosis sometimes led to tuberculosis, which others could catch. One thing I always remember, I didn't even dare to hug and kiss my father. We were so afraid of catching that disease. He went in October and he died the next April. And when he knew he was going, he wanted to be home. So he came home and died at home. The incident of death caused by the silicosis was extremely high. And if you add all of the other ways that they chose to end their life rather than drown in their own blood, uh, you have an extremely high percentage of stone cutters who, who took their own life because they didn't want to face that kind of death. Lui si ricorda benissimo parecchie volte sentendo le campane delle chiese dei paesi vicino sentiva dire ecco è uno di, del, che ha preso il male dell'America perché uh, contraevano questa silicosi e non c'era cura. Dopo 15 anni arrivavano a casa e dopo un po' morivano. It was a tough time, but this was common in, the, in those times when the, uh, anyone reaching the age of 40 or 50, having worked in the granite industry, was a ripe old age. So there were a lot of widows in Barry at that time. The Stonecutters Union made dust reduction a central demand and struck over the issue in 1903 and in 1915. But employer practices reduced the union's ranks and labor's ability to press for safer workplaces. The employers looked upon the dust collection equipment as an additional cost. And uh, you always look at competition, you know, and if your neighbor don't have to do it, why should you have to do it from a business point of view? So the union recognized in the 30s that there had to be something, some kind of incentive for the employers to all do it. In 1938, the union was able to convince management that everyone should have these suction devices put in. The union negotiated a contract that year, and I believe that was the first year that, that we had 100% union contracts in the, uh, in the industry. We negotiated a contract that provided for a dollar a day less wages, providing the employers would all put in the dust collecting devices suction devices, we call them. At the same time, the state of Vermont passed legislation requiring the use of suction equipment in the stone sheds. So our union had no new cases of silicosis of people that started after 1938. There were like huge vacuum hoses that they placed near their work to suck this dangerous dust away from the workplace and it made it safe for people to work in, uh, in the granite plant. 